fantastic day and I think my pulse you know survived this day and it can't wait to pulsate a bit more during this oh message tonight. Oh my Lord. Looking well, forward you know, to it. I was up and down today but trust me when I came to church and I had to walk up those steps I felt the pulse. Oh so the pulse is there. <laughs> the pulse is there. So ladies and gentlemen we'd like to welcome you again to another episode of our spiritual emphasis week. Did I say week or weeks? It's supposed to be weeks. 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 So it's two weeks of spiritual emphasis. Listen, I said two weeks, but I put one finger. <laughs> and your something is wrong. I'll so put I'm... the other finger off here. Okay, okay. So we, we, are, we are inviting you to our two weeks of one. spiritual emphasis. That is emphasis. the first week. This is the second. Lovely. Here at the University of the Southern Caribbean, right in the lush greenery, Maracas Valley. Of oh, yes. The beautiful Trinidad. Welcome one and welcome all. Now, Andrew, guess what happened? The last time, mm -hmm. we welcomed so many persons. You know, we forgot some people. Unfortunately, we did. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean that we love you any less. Mm -hmm. For so example, mm -hmm. who, did, who did we forget? Well, we are going to go through our list, and I hope that we remember that individual. All right. Good. So let's go, Andrew. Who, do, who are we welcoming tonight? Welcome South Campus in Trinidad. Welcome South Campus. And of course, we cannot have tuned out without Tobago. So those oh, yeah. persons who are watching for Tobago. from Tobago, welcome, welcome, welcome. And also, also, welcome Antigua. Mm, welcome to those from St. Lucia. Barbados. And Guyana. Grenada. And of course, I see what, I hope you see what uh -huh. I am seeing. Uh, oh, yes, yes. The place that we forgot <laughs> the last time. Let me take this opportunity to welcome those from Dominica. Dominica. Dr. Hill, welcome. <laughs> and everyone else from Dominica, welcome, welcome. France, Martinique, Guadeloupe, St. Martin, and we welcome course, you. And of course, the beautiful Federation, small but powerful, <laughs> the tranquil place of this entire world, think it's and Nevis. I and hope Nevis. I'm not biased, but oh, I'm, no, a, I'm, a, right. I'm a proud kitchen. Those from think it's and Nevis, welcome, welcome. Represent your campus online. Mm, represent. Well, okay, you had your chance to be biased. Now let me be biased. Yes, we already it, mentioned time, uh, Mr. Trinidad and Tobago. So now I'd like to welcome St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Mm, and trust me, I'm sure Karen Nichols is there. Oh, yes, and definitely. Hi, Nichols family. Well. Karen, I'm asking you just post that flag in. We know you always have that flag going. Very patriotic. Very patriotic. Those from Anguilla, I say welcome. You know that's Dr. Hill again, Do right? Dr. Hill again. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, Suriname. Yes. Suriname as well. Yes. And of course, you know, we have persons who have visited us from the United States of America. We say welcome again to our week of emphasis. And also from St. Thomas, we welcome you, our friends who are currently in St. Thomas. And the United Kingdom, welcome. To those who are Houstons, we say welcome. We, to those who are visitors, we say welcome. To those who just love what we do here at USC, we say welcome. To the administrators, we say welcome. Faculty and staff, we say welcome. Welcome. Andrea, welcome, we Houstons, everywhere. Everywhere, yes. Andrea. You know, Jason, Yushans mm -hmm. and friends have been out in full force to celebrate the name of the Lord, to feast on his word, and to draw closer to the one true 
God. Amen. Do you know that so far, well, actually with the, the last um, program, we had 1,500 views in excess, actually, wow. of 1,500 views on YouTube. Wow. 1,500. I'm excited about that. No, that is good. That is good. 1,500. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we're encouraging you to step it up to 2,000. Oh, uh, yeah, can we can do that. Up to 2,000. What is it they have to do? Well, tonight they can uh, share the link. Um, oh, let me also remind you to like and subscribe. Mm -hmm. You can also phone a friend. Now, everybody needs to hear the word yes. of the Lord tonight. In fact, message somebody from class. Invite the entire family to hear God's word tonight. Mm. Invite grandpa, hmm. grandma. Invite grandmère, grandpère. Invite your macomé. Hmm. Invite nenen, hmm. tanti. Everybody, abuelo, abuela. Invite them. Tut bagai. Everybody needs to hear the word of the Lord tonight. Not so, wow. Jason? Wow. That is everybody, Andrea. Mm -hmm. Everybody. That is Tut bagai. Everybody. Tut bagai. <laughs> everybody. So, welcome, people, to take this opportunity to share the link and invite as many persons as possible because we are in for a good treat. We are mm -hmm. in for a good treat. Now, and Andrea, the pastor is doing uh -huh. an exceptionally great job. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Fantastic program, job. I believe. Yeah. My Lord, I listened to him yesterday and I said, wow, Pastor Shalon Kerr, he has that pulse going. Oh, yes. He has that pulse going. Who do, who do you think sustains Pastor Kerr's pulse? Eh? Well, one, I was about to say... The one true know. God. Yes, I was about to say that. So welcome, everybody. Welcome one and welcome all. Welcome. And now, listen, we have some good news. We have some great, great, great news for our viewers. Uh -huh. We have some great news. Now, Andrea, tell me, what is it I'm holding in my hand? Now, a gift A gift for me? It's yeah. like, <laughs> no, it's, it's, not, it's not for it's you. Not, oh, no, I it's see. not oh, for you. Oh. Okay, but, but right. just tell us, tell the audience what I'm holding in my hand, Andrew. Wait, let me hold it properly before <laughs> I drop this thing. Tell me what I'm holding, Andrew. What, what does it look like? Well, it looks like something I would like to have. Um, a Samsung Galaxy tablet. Mm -hmm. S6, is it? Yes. Hmm? Anybody, would anyone like to have one of those? trust me, people, we want to give this to you. We want to give this to you. You know, usually we have programs, you know, we give Bibles and everything, but you can find the Bible on this. You just need internet. So you can get this as well. So we want to give this to you. And guess what? There is a way in which you can get this, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. We have what we call the Pulse. What did I say? The Pulse. The Pulse. The Pulse Instagram competition. And we have a few instructions for you if you want to participate. And guess what? I will encourage you to participate because you can only get a chance to win the tablet if you participate. How Definitely. can you participate? Let me give you that information quickly. Now, the participants must tune into the week of prayer, but it's only fair. Yes, of course. Tune into the week of prayer <laughs> session live via our YouTube platform. Then you are asked to do one minute video summary short of any one minute one of the topics presented in the week of prayer just one minute just short one minute any of the topic now you know participant must send us their videos and we will post it on our usc caring church instagram page mm -hmm. where the video with the most likes and views oh, yeah. will get the opportunity to win this samson galaxy tab Sounds like the winner needs to get their tante and nenen to wow. like, like the video as well if they want to win it. Eh? Exactly. Well, you know, in order to participate in this Instagram competition, you must also be um, a follower of the USC Caring Church on mm -hmm. Instagram and also ensure that you also like us on uh, YouTube. Follow us on YouTube and like us. There. Yes. Excellent, excellent. And let me let you know that videos can be sent to The Pulse. Mm -hmm. What did I say, Andrea? The Pulse. The Pulse. Dot w -O -P w -O -P at at gmail .com. Dot com. Now, the competition actually started on November the 12th. But you are not that far behind <laughs> because the competition actually ends on Friday, 19th of November. And submission closing date is Sunday, the 21st of November. The winner announcement date, Andrea. The winner announcement date will be on Thursday. 26, 26 November. November. What time? What time? At 6 p.m. So, ladies and gentlemen, again, please sign up that form and send your videos to the pulse.wop 
at gmail.com. Put yourself in place to win the Samsung tablet Galaxy. That's what it is called, a Galaxy tablet. Galaxy <laughs> tablet. Yes. What else do you have to tell your audience, Angie, before you uh, move forward? Just remember, you can't win if you're not in it. Okay? Nice. I love it. You have to As be they in say, it. You have to be in it to win it. To win it. To win it. So take this opportunity, ladies and gentlemen. Take this opportunity. Now, I must say, Andrew, on Friday we started here at the Caring University Church, and we had an extraordinarily great time. Oh, we yes. Fantastic. Praise the time. Lord. It was fantastic. You know what I did? Mm -hmm. I hosted on Friday, but I went home to listen to the program again. <laughs> I, it I was that people, good, eh? It was I don't that good. people actually do that. But I hosted and I went to listen again. No, I didn't go to listen to myself. I went to listen to the preacher. Because that sermon was extraordinarily great. He gave us that topic. Is this too much to ask? And there the pastor, Pastor Kerr, reminded us that God is the best person to fill our needs. Amen, amen. That we can't lovely, possibly... Lovely, lovely, lovely evening. We can't possibly emphasize that oh enough. My Lord. He is the very best. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And us. then we heard uh, plan B is not an option. Now this message cautioned us that our failure to listen to good counsel has dangerous consequences. Mm. This is something that we often learn after the fact. But you know, it's so good to learn from other people's experiences. But God, hmm. in spite of the consequences, but God. we can say, but, but God. God. Hallelujah. God assures us of his protection when we follow his plan alone. When we follow his plan alone. Nothing Excellent. else, no detour. Excellent. And this evening, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be looking at the topic. This is not what we expected. I don't know about you, Andrew, <laughs> but I have had some situation where I was placed in. I wasn't expecting that. And we want to hear where the pastor is coming from tonight. This is not what we expected. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm encouraging you. I'm encouraging you. Take joy in sitting next to your device. Take joy in sipping that water, maybe that tea, whatever beverage you decide to sip at this moment. Take joy in encouraging your families, your friends, your neighbors to sit with you or sit in their homes yes. to listen to this evening's program. Well, as you sip your bush tea or whatever beverage you choose to have, yes. um, we will continue with uh, scripture reading, mm -hmm. intercessory prayer, praise and worship by the dynamic Chanel and team. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, then, um, we will then be blessed with the word. Special and trust music. Me, you have to remember special, special music. Special music, that's we're right. Not, we're, the special yes. music will mm -hmm. come just before, um, before Pastor Kerr brings God's message to us. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, it's going to be greater than anything you expect. Don't miss it. But Invite everybody, it. call everybody, get everyone you can online. We don't want to miss this tonight. We can't miss the blessing. Excellent. And so, Andrew, I think our time has come to an end. Because we want okay. to hear from everyone else. <laughs> Excellent. Stay with us for tonight's health yes, check. So before we go, to we check have your pulse. to pray. All you right. know, you know, for, for us yeah. to talk about the pulse, we have to pray, right? Oh, yes. We have to pray. So let us pray, ladies and gentlemen. Father, we thank you. We praise you, we glorify you, and we honor you. You are indeed a sovereign God, our creator, our redeemer, our sustainer, and our friend. And tonight, dear Father, we are ever grateful that you would have availed another opportunity for us to come in your presence to give you the praise and the glory that you rightfully deserve. Amen. Every person who is in the listening of my voice, every viewer on the platform tonight, dear Father, I see, I pray that you will anoint and bless them in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Bring souls to thy kingdom, transform lives, elevate our minds, dear Father, so that each and every one of us will become kingdom-oriented tonight amen, in the amen. lovely name Hallelujah. of Jesus. Somebody say, Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Now at this Lord. time, at this time, we'll go straight, we'll go straight into our scripture reading and our intercessory prayer. Greetings, everyone. Um, today's scriptures reading is taken from Acts 20, verses 7 to 12. And it reads, And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, 
Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morn, and continued his preach, his speech until midnight. And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. And there sat in the window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell on him and embraced, embracing him said, Trouble not yourself, for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again and had broken bread and eaten and taken a long while, even till break of day, so he departed. And they brought the young man alive and with not little trouble. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we give you thanks, honor, and worship, Lord. For you are worthy and worthy to be praised, my Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us with uh, another day of life, health, and strength, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the roof over our head, clothes on our back, and shoes on our feet. Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, Lord, we ask, Lord, that may you grant us, Lord, the strength and the patience, Lord, uh, for the students, lecturers, and staff, Lord, to make it through this semester, Lord. Lord, as we come to the near end of the semester, Lord, many students are struggling with their assignments, Lord. Uh, many lecturers have um, assignments to, to mark, Lord. And I pray, my Heavenly um, Father, that may you rest your steady hand upon both lecturers and students, Lord, and may you help them, Lord, to fulfill their task, Lord, Father, be it in the assignments or in the marking of the assignments. Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you today, Lord, in prayer, Lord, and ask, may you bless those that are in need, Lord, uh, students that are both are in Trinidad and abroad, those who are struggling with their finances, Lord, those that may have trouble on their job, or those that may be seeking for a job. I pray, Lord, may you work, um, bless them, Lord, and guide them through these difficult situations, Lord. Lord, we know that um, COVID, Lord, has um, caused a disruption in many of our lives, Lord. But even so, Lord, we, stead, we stay steadfast, Lord, and rely on you, Lord. And, and, and we look we raise our heads to you, Lord, and we give you praise and thanks. For you are our rock and our fortress, Lord. For you are our comforter, my Heavenly Father. For as it is written in Psalm 91, you said, He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I pray, Lord, as we call upon you now, Lord, may you answer our prayer, Lord. May you have mercy upon us, Lord. And may you grant us peace, Lord. Uh, may you strengthen our mind, Lord. Uh, may you strengthen our spiritual man, Lord, and may you strengthen our body, Lord, to make it true. Heavenly Father, I pray all this, Lord, on behalf of the students, the lecturers, the staff of the USC. And we give you thanks, praise, honor, and worship, Lord, for there is nothing that you cannot do, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Welcome back to the pulse. I know we've experienced a bit of that beat yesterday, Sabbath, but today is Sunday and we're continuing this amazing series. Tell a friend about it. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and as we worship, share with someone because now we're starting on dynamic. We want you to wake up. Let this Sunday food settle to this side and time to Yes, 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 yes,
So this in itself is a moment of praise and worship because we're together yes. doing this. We haven't had an experience like this in a while, but we're grateful. We're grateful yes. for life. We're grateful for your yes. love shining on us. So as we sing this song, it's a holy, but it's a glory. Shine, Jesus, shine. This song gets me so excited, guys. I always feel like if I'm on top of a mountain, <laughs> crying out to God, shine, shine on me. And you know what? I want you to have the same experience as you draw closer to God. You will draw closer to God.
God provide, watch God provide. Somebody, somebody just needs to say amen on the chat tonight. Watch God provide. Watch God provide in a pandemic. Watch God provide when it seems like things are going out of control. Watch God provide. Watch God provide in your life tonight. We want to thank God for that wonderful ministry and song. I want to thank Sister Rinalcia Williams for ushering us into the presence of God with that song once more again. And I give God praise and thanks for being here tonight. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone out there. Good evening to Pulse Land. Good evening to Pulse Land. Good evening to Pulse Land, wherever you may be viewing us, whether from the scenic paradise of Tobago, or you may be up way where there are many waters in Guyana, or wherever across the Caribbean Union you are with us tonight. We are so happy to have you here. I bring you greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to get the ball rolling quick tonight. There are some persons who are especially invited to view 
tonight and I would like to just give a shout out to them tonight. I want to give a shout out to Ashton. Ashton is one of my neighbors close by. Ashton, if you're looking, good night to you. I want to shout out Miss Beverly. I want to shout out Miss Beverly tonight and the whole family, the children, everyone. I shout you out tonight. I want to shout out tonight Miss Patricia Dematus, who may be online at this time. Good evening, Sister Dematus. And I shout out Miss Carmelita. Ms. Carmelita, if you're watching tonight, I shout you out. I thank you for joining us tonight. And I also want to shout out Ms. Yvette Defu. Ms. Yvette Defu, I thank you for joining us tonight. And I trust that all of you would be blessed tremendously tonight as you view tonight's program. I also would like to shout out some of my um, friends and family that I see online, even some of my church members from whom I saw Sister Marva Jack Dillon. I saw, you know, a lot of names in the chat. I have to go back in the chat to make sure, you know, I keep connected with you. But I thank you for joining us tonight. And we have been having a wonderful time here at The Pulse. Amen. We, we have been having a wonderful time at The Pulse. And so we just want to give God praise. We want to give God thanks. I want to thank uh, God for this wonderful opportunity that he has given to me to, to share the word with you. And so tonight, I invite you to bow your heads with me as we talk to God in prayer at this moment. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for who you are. You are God and there is no other like you. We thank you for the blessings of today. We thank you, O oh God, that your mercies are new each and every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And so now we have arrived at the preaching moment. Nothing else, O oh Father, is more important than this moment. This is the moment when you will speak to us through me. So, Father, I pray that you will remove anything that is unlike you. Forgive me, cleanse me from all unrighteousness so that this message tonight would resonate upon the hearts of men and women across Pulse Land Online tonight. And Father, as we continue to pray each session for this Pulse, we pray, O oh God, that the messenger will not get in front of the message and may the script be subject to the scripture, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I invite you tonight to join with me as we look at our passage of scripture. We want to take it to the book of Acts. We Remember we started yesterday. For those of you who missed yesterday's sermon, you, you got to go back and listen so that you can follow through with what's happening tonight. Yesterday, Sabbath, we looked at the topic, Plan B is not an option, Sister Seely. If we are to survive this spiritual onslaught, we got to just cut off those plan B's. So you just need to cancel those plan B's as you move into the new year 2022. And tonight, we want to look at Acts chapter 28. And I would read from verses 1 to 10. Acts chapter 28, follow with me in your Bibles, you're in your homes, you're in your veranda, wherever you are, on your bed, relaxing. Just open your word at this moment. Open your hearts to the word of God. The Bible says in verse 1, Acts chapter 28 and verses 1, And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness. Let me just read that again. And, and the barbarous people showed us no little kindness. For they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the coal. And verse 3 says, And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. Look at Bacchanal here tonight. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beasts hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he had escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth him not to live. But verse 5 says, And he shook off the beasts 
into the fire, have mercy, and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly, but after they looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said he was a god. But verse 7 says, in the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, others also which had diseases in the land, in the island rather, came and were healed. And our final verse for tonight, who also honored us with many honors, and when we departed, they laded us with such things as were necessary. Tonight we look at the subject, the God who provides but we are narrowing on the caption, this is not what we expected. This is not what we expected. Father, speak through your word now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You would agree with me tonight that there are moments in your life when you needed help. Hello? There were moments in your life when you needed help, it could have been help from a family member, help from the government, help from some individual. There are times in our lives when we need help. And what I've recognized, friends, tonight is that sometimes help comes from the most unlikely sources. Now, when the plane she was aboard leveled off at 14,500 feet in the air, Joanne Murray a bank executive from North Carolina, she took a deep breath and jumped out the door. She was enjoying her free fall through the air from 14,500 feet above in the air. She was enjoying that free fall from the sky until she pulled the ripcord for her parachute and nothing happened. Just about then, you can imagine the adrenaline rush that Joanne Murray experienced. But the story goes like this, that Joanne did not panic. Why? Because Joanne knew she had a backup parachute. Joanne had a plan B. But remember we said yesterday, you got to be careful with plan Bs. Now, as she was falling, as she was falling, it's reported that she was falling 120 miles per hour when she decided to pull the reserve chute. And so she pulled it, and it opened just fine. But it happened that as she pulled it and it opened, she lost her bearings in the air. And so could you imagine in her struggle to try to find her balance, she deflated the chute. Now, while the chute briefly slowed her descent coming down, she was coming down at 80 miles per hour. She struck the earth with a violent blow, shattered her right side, and jarred the fillings from her teeth. At that point in time, she was barely conscious, and her heart was failing. But just when it seemed like things couldn't get much worse, she realized that she had fallen into a patch of fire ants that didn't really appreciate her disturbing their solitude. Reports are that those ants stung her about 200 times before the paramedics arrived. The doctors treated Joanne, believed though, that the ants actually saved her life. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The ants actually helped 
to save Joanne's life. You see, the, the doctors theorized that the stings of the ants shocked her heart enough to keep it beating. Could I tell you tonight, things are not always how it seems. Things are not always how you see it. The perspective of your life, how you see it, it's not always how you view it. Well, can I just tell you tonight, friends, that Joanne's encounter reminds me of Paul and the men on the ship yesterday. Hmm, hmm. At one point in time, at one point in time, sailing seemed quite smooth and fine. But in the blink of an eye, their situation changed for the worse, and it seemed like they would lose everything that they had, including their lives. But as I told you yesterday, if God is allowing the ship that you are in to get a beating, it's because there's a blessing on the way. You see, the last thing that we know was that Paul and the men on the ship found themselves very close to some unidentified island. By this time, the ship was already broken, broken from the effects of the storm. And those on the ship who could swim, I was in that category, remember I said I was in category 44, those who could swim were told to make their way into the waters to head for land. While the others, like myself, would have been there on the broken pieces of the ship moving to the land. Well, when we get to chapter 28, my friends, the Bible shows us that they said, the Bible says when they escaped, they knew that the island was called Melita. Now, Melita, or Malta as we know it, was an island in the Mediterranean. Malta was part of the Roman Empire at the time when Paul visited. The island is about 17 miles long and nine miles wide. It's not a very big island. So can you imagine, my friends, tonight, and especially those of you who looked at the message yesterday, can you imagine what is going through the minds of Paul and these prisoners as they look at this entire situation? Yes, you know, I would expect them to be very grateful for God preserving their lives, but they have now arrived on this strange island and they have no resources. Everything that they had on the ship, they had to throw it aboard. And everything they had before was gone. Can you imagine being on a strange island and you have no water, no clothes, you are homeless, you have no money, you have no idea of the future. There was no massy stores on Malta. There was no, you know, no resources for them. And the coldness of the winter was upon them, as we know, and as we can all deduce, it was just a matter of time before hypothermia, dehydration, or starvation stepped in. Somebody knows what I'm talking about tonight. You know what it feels like to be in a shoe like that. You are probably going through a kind of experience tonight like that. And you know, the road for you, the road for your life may seem very uncertain. The ship that you are in may be going through a beating right now. You may be going through a difficult circumstance. But I want to let you know tonight, that's not how your story is going to end. And could I just let you know tonight for the first pulse point. God positions you. He positions us where he can attend to our needs and to the needs of others. Look at verse 2. Look at verse 2. The Bible says, and the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled the fire and received us everyone because of the present rain and because of the cold. These barbarous people are foreigners. They, they are not even speaking the language where Paul could understand and these prisoners could understand. But yet, even though they are strange, even though they have a strange language, they are showing kindness. Isn't it wonderful how God puts people in your space to just take care of you, to just provide for you? God is such a wonderful God. Somebody just needs to lift up a praise note of worship for God. God tonight that he has just been providing for you in the midst of a pandemic that has been causing pain and struggle and defeat and dismay. God is on your side. You see, there's one thing I love about God, Sister Seely. I have a strong belief that it is part of God's character to allow certain situations to occur which can help people 
who don't know him to get in contact with him, to get a revelation of who he is. Look at what the Bible says in verse 3. The Bible says, and when Paul had gathered, oh my, this gets exciting now. This gets exciting now. The Bible says, and when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks, Paul was a good master guide. Paul gathered a, a, a bundle of sticks and the Bible says he laid them on the fire. But interestingly, the Bible says there came out of the heat of the fire a viper who fastened on the hand of Paul. My, my, my. Where did this viper come from? I'm reading the text in my preparation. Where did this viper come from? This is a poisonous snake. For those of us here in Trinidad and Tobago, this is a mappy pee we're talking about. This is a poisonous snake. And I'm asking myself the question, why is the snake latching on to Paul? Wasn't it the barbarians who lit the fire? Wasn't it the barbarous people, rather, who kindled the fire? Did they not see a viper in the heat? Why did the viper not attack the barbarous people? These are questions that we need to ask, and these are questions that we need answers for. Why is the snake biting the good Christian man? Why is the snake biting the good Christian man who is trying to live for the Lord? You know when you're trying to live for the Lord and you're just experiencing attack after attack after attack and after attack? Why is the snake biting Paul? Well, you see, I've come to understand sometimes as believers we start asking God the questions because we feel like we are the ones who are always under attack. We are always the ones who are under scrutiny and criticism. It seems like the righteous people cannot find their way according to that lady on social media. I can't find my way, boy. I can't find my way. It seems like this is how it is for some Christians today. And that's why I remember David in Psalm chapter 10. He cried out to the Lord and he said, Lord, why are you so far away? Why are you so far away? Why do you hide yourself, Lord, when I am in trouble? The proud and the brutal people, they are hunting me down. Lord, let them get caught by their evil plans. He said in verse 3, the wicked brag about their deepest desires. Those greedy people, they hate and they curse you, Lord. The wicked are too proud to even turn to you or even think about you. They are always successful, David is saying. Though they cannot even understand your teachings, they're not attending church, they're not keeping the Sabbath, they're not doing things that we're doing, but they are prospering. And we who are trying to live for God, we are under attack. Don't you feel like that sometimes, church people? Hmm? Don't you feel like you are the one always under attack? Well, I need you to listen tonight. I know someone can relate to David right now because it feels like you are the one who are under attack. It feels like you are the one with the snake on your hand right now. But there is something, there is something. There is something I need for you to understand. And I want to repeat it to you. I told you before and I'm going to tell you again. I have a strong belief that it is part of God's character to allow certain situations to occur in your life which would help people who don't know him to get a revelation of who he is. I want you to pull up your seatbelt right now. Latch on your seatbelt and pull up on your seat and listen to the word at this moment because what I need for you to chew on a little bit tonight is this. This attack, this viper that came out of the fire in this text, I am saying this is an attack. But this attack is a distraction. This attack is a distraction. You see, I've come to recognize, friends, that we look at attacks from the wrong perspective sometimes. You see, the reason why is because we forget that we are not fighting a physical flesh battle. We are in a spiritual battle, and that's why Paul says that we do not fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness. In high places, the fight that you are in is not a fight of flesh 
and blood. And so you got to be careful when you see attacks coming your way because the attack is really a distraction. What do you mean, preacher? The, the, the attack is a distraction. But we see it as opposition. Because, you see, we have been taking on many issues in our life, and I know I'm speaking to somebody particular at this moment. You have been taking on a particular issue in your life right now, and you are perceiving that it is human opposition or systematic opposition. Really, it's the devil who wants you to believe that it is human and systematic, but it is a distraction. What do you mean, preacher? You see, the devil is a liar. The Bible calls him the father of lies. He wants you to view the attack in the wrong way. Because, you see, and somebody is going to be blessed with a mindset breakthrough tonight. Because if the devil can get you to view the attack in the wrong way, then he knows that he can distract you from what God really wants to do in your life. It is my belief, friends, that the enemy's aim to attack Paul, it was the enemy's aim rather to attack Paul through this viper, through this snake. Why? Because he knew that Paul was a threat to his plan. <laughs> And this is what brings us to point number two. You see, I want somebody to know tonight in Paul's land, the devil is always threatened by the potential of your impact. So his best form of defense is to attack. Can I just repeat that for someone who missed it, someone who has just taken a glass of water? The devil is always threatened by the potential of your impact. Why? So his best form of defense defense, what he wants to do to secure himself, he has to attack you. And so the devil knows how powerful your testimony would be. That is why he is clouding your mind for the past few months throughout this pandemic and, 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 and be clouding your senses, your spiritual senses, and having you to see all different types of distractions so that you will not submit your life to God in this series because he knows that your testimony is powerful. The devil knows, my friends. I want to talk to a marital couple tonight. The devil knows the great potential of your marriage. That is why he's going to cause all kind of communication issues, sexual issues, commitment issues, spiritual issues to raise its ugly head in your marriage. You think the devil likes you? The devil knows how much people would benefit from your experience in that field that you are now working hard towards, that you are studying so passionately towards, so that he knows what he, you know what he's going to do? He's going to make sure he puts in your path financial stress, academic stress, relationship stress, family stress, all in an event and all with the intent to break you down and to diminish your motivation and to affect your mental health. The devil knows how talented your children are, parents, tonight. He knows how talented your, your children are, so he's going he's gonna to lure them into relationships and into friendships that would lead them, the, lead them down the wrong roads and lead them down the wrong channels. He knows how to mess up your children. He knows how to get them tied up in illegal activities so that he can embarrass your family. The devil knows the impact of your family once your family is connected to God and is walking in the purpose and the destiny that God has for your family. He knows that that is a threat to his kingdom. The devil does not like you. Young people, the devil does not like you. You might be playing with the devil tonight, but he is not in no way playing with you. You see, the thing about it is, even though the devil wants to mess you up, the thing about it is when you are walking with God, God uses your crucibles as a means of not only showing you his power, but others as well. He's not only going to show you his power, but others as well. You see, God... God allowed this attack on Paul 
because he wanted to use this situation to show these barbarous people who he was. He wanted to reveal himself to them. Look at verse 4. The Bible says, And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, hmm, No doubt this man is a murderer, <laughs> whom though he had escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth him not to live. My word, my word. You see, when you know that the attack, that the attack that you are facing is a distraction, you have to know how to respond to it. You have to know how to respond to the attack when you understand that it's a distraction. Look at what happened in verse 5. Look at how Paul dealt with the attack. The Bible says, Paul shook off the beast. Paul shook off the beast. And, and, and you know, I love the Bible, you know. I love the Bible because the Bible didn't leave it by chance. The Bible didn't just say Paul shook off the beast, you know. It used a preposition. The Bible used a preposition, and the preposition was into. Paul shook off the beast into the fire, into the fire, and felt no harm, into the fire. See, I want to tell somebody tonight who is listening on Paul's land, this is how you respond to the venomous attacks that the enemy is throwing at you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is the way you have to respond to the venomous attack. You see, many of us make the mistake as believers and even as non-believers, we make the mistake of just shaking off the snake. So many of us still have the snake in our in our environs the snake is still there you're struggling with that issue but the bible is showing you you got to shake it into the fire but you are shaking it right around you you're shaking it right there huh that person that you know you're supposed to block and delete you haven't blocked and deleted them but you are shaking them right there you can still connect with them listen you got to understand you got to know how to respond to the attack and I want to talk to somebody tonight I want to talk to some people tonight you got to shake off the devil in the fire in the fire in the fire you see some of us are also walking with the snake on our hand we are walking with the snake on our hand huh but you got to shake it off into the fire And so I want to tell a husband or a wife tonight who is experiencing marital issues, you got to shake that marital problem, that marital snake. You got to shake that marital snake that is biting your marriage away. You got to shake it into the fire of prayer. Shake it back into the fire of prayer. Morning worship prayer. Evening worship prayer. Shake it back into the fire of prayer. I want to tell a student tonight that you need to shake that snake of failure that is creeping up on you this semester. Shake that snake of failure that is clinging on to your transcript and clinging on to your future and shake it back into the fire of God's wisdom. Oh my Lord, have mercy tonight. You got to shake that snake back into the fire of God's wisdom. I want to let a young person know tonight you got to shake the snake of sexual purity, of sexual impurity rather, into the fire, that sexual impurity, that sexual life that you are in right now that you know is messing up your life, is poisoning your value tonight. God is saying to you, you got to shake that snake into the fire. No plan B's here. You got to shake those snakes into the fire. Cancel those plan B's. 2022 is not a year to play. It's a year when Jesus is soon about to come. You got to shake everything that is holding you back into the fire. You see, oftentimes as well, when people look at our situation, it's so interesting. They think that we would not make it, Sister Celie. But, 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 but 
I've come to understand, and this is the next pulse point here that you can take down. When God is with you, people's expectations of you fail to materialize. Can somebody say amen tonight? When God is with you, child of God, when God is with you, mommy, when God is with you, daddy, when God is with you, young man, you're listening to me tonight. When God is with you, young woman, you're listening to me tonight. The expectations that people have for you would fail to materialize because God is blessing you and he is protecting you and he is providing for you. There is favor on your life. Look at verse 6. Look at verse 6. We don't have too long tonight, you know. We, we have a whole week to go again. Look at verse 6. The Bible says, hmm, let me take my time and read this. The Bible says, how be it? They looked when he should have swollen. <laughs> you, you all reading this with me? You all reading this with me? They, they looked when he should have swollen, or fallen down suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds. I want to let somebody know tonight that somebody is going to be changing their mind on you tonight. Somebody is going to be changing their mind on you. They thought that you would not make it. They thought that you would have been a failure. But they are going to change their mind on you. They thought that you would never get baptized. But they didn't know that the pulse was coming and God was going to speak to you. Hmm. God was going to speak to you specifically and let you know that this is the series to give God your life. They didn't know that God was about to do something for you. Huh. Lord have mercy. They thought that he would have fallen down dead. But when they saw him still alive, they said, this man has to be supernatural. This man is a supernatural man, but it was not Paul who was supernatural. It was the God who Paul served, and that is what happens when you give God your life. He's going to do things in your life that is just going to blow the minds of people all over the world. I want to repeat to you again. I want to repeat to you again tonight. I want to repeat to you again tonight. I have a strong belief. I've been repeating it. I've been repeating it, and I want it to stick, according to old people in Tobago, knit it in your brain. I have a strong belief that it is part of God's character to allow certain situations to occur which can help those who do not know him. Those who do not know him. That's our message. That's the message of this church, the Seventh-day Adventist church, to preach the everlasting gospel to the world so that people who don't know him can get to know him. And tonight, somebody in the chat needs to get to know him. And I'm talking about him, Jesus Christ. And to know who he is in your life. Look at verse 7 and verse 8. Hmm. Verse 7 says, in the same quarters, oh Lord have mercy. Remember we're talking about the God who provides, the God who provides, <laughs> the God who provides. In verse 7, the Bible says, in the same quarters were possessions. Possessions. You know what? Possessions. Possessions of the chief, the chief, you know, of the chief man of the island. No, no, when Paul and them came on this island, the island looked like it was empty of resources. Empty of resources. No water, no food, no clothes, no house, no money to pay the rent. You understand what I'm saying? No money to finish pay the mortgage. It seemed like their resources was thinned out. But the Bible says in the same quarters <laughs> were possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius. Nice name. Nice name, Publius. And God was going to do something public for his life. For Publius. Publius, the Bible says, who received us and lodged us three days courteous. Listen, this is rent with no fee attached to you know. Listen, Publius was a, the best landlord you could ever ask for. 
My Lord, I know some persons experienced some challenges with landlords during this pandemic, but I can tell you if you was in this story, this landlord would have treated you so nice. Publius would have put you up. He would have put you up in his possessions there. The Bible says he lodged them courteously for three days. But look at this, look at this, look at this. It says, and it came to pass. You know when the Bible says that? When the Bible says, and it came to pass, pull up, pull up your seat and listen. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and a bloody flux. This is the male version to the woman with the issue of blood. Lord have mercy. This, this is the male version of the woman with the issue of blood. And just like how Jesus was right there for her to touch the hem of his garment, there was a man named Paul who was ready to go and touch. Oh, Lord have mercy. Don't rush this word tonight. Listen, listen, listen to me tonight. Listen to me tonight. Publius' father was sick. Like many people in this pandemic right now. Sick on their afflicted bed, on their bed of affliction rather. Some are struggling to breathe right now in the ICU. Problems across our nation. Stress among the world. Stress all over a global health pandemic. We cannot understand it. We cannot, it seems like we cannot survive it. But God is saying something to you tonight. And I want you to listen. I want you to listen. The Bible says, when Paul came in, when Paul entered in where Publius' father was, the Bible says, Paul entered in and prayed. Are there any prayer warriors out there tonight? Are there any prayer intercessors out there tonight who can pray and bring down the plans of the enemy who is seeking to destroy our world and seeking to destroy our families with this COVID-19 virus? Are there intercessors tonight? The Bible says Paul prayed and laid his hands I know you missed it, and I'm going to read it again. Paul prayed and laid his feet and laid his head and laid his mouth. No. Paul laid his hands. You see, this is why it's so important. So important. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. It's so important, friends, to know how to respond to the attacks. You got to know how to respond to the attacks that is coming your way. Don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. Why? Because if you get distracted, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. You see, the attack, when you see the attack come, comes in, it's a signal that the devil foresees an incoming threat. <laughs> Don't get distracted. When you see the attacks coming in in your life right now, get excited. You don't hear that because attacks are not welcome. But an attack signals that the enemy is foreseen an incoming threat. You see the same hand that the snake wanted to bite and to rip off and to destroy is the same hand that Paul was about to use to heal Publius father. What am I saying to you tonight? I'm saying to you tonight that you got to understand that the attack of the enemy is a distraction. If you keep focused and keep connected to God, you would recognize that God has some big things to do in your life. There are some people God wants to set you up to so that you can minister to them. And so God is speaking to someone tonight who is in the midst of an attack and who feels like, you know, your life is just moving out of the direction that you want it to move. But God, as the song says, is a God who provides. He is a God who is providing for you. He has provided before and he is going to continue to provide for you and for me. And this brings us to our third point tonight. I want to let you know that the journey... 
the journey that God is taking you on is not by chance. It's not by chance. That journey God is taking you on, my sister, tonight, it's not by chance. I know it seems very difficult to try to be lovable to that person who seems unlovable. That family member who seems to be toxic. And it seems like you are imprisoned. You can't guess out. You don't know what to do. You are fearful. You are anxious. You don't know what the future holds. I'm telling you tonight that God has you in his mind. He has you in his mind. And I want to let you know tonight that journey that you are on, my sister, it's not a journey by chance. God is orchestrating events in your life that you would not be able to understand now, especially if you are not in the spiritual position that you should be with God. Because can I let you know tonight that spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Young man, that journey that God is taking you on tonight, it seems like you cannot give up those illegal activities, those illegal things and substances that you are using. They have tried, uh, you know, to get rehabilitation for you, but it seems like you are only relapsing. But I want to let you know, don't give up tonight. That journey that God is taking you on is not by chance. He has a way of doing things that are inconceivable. Our God is an amazing God. Do I have some witnesses tonight in the Pulse land online who can testify that God has taken you from some positions in your life and has provided for you when it seemed like there was no way out. It seemed like you would not be able to move, move forward with your family and to move forward with your goals and your aspirations. But God is telling you tonight that he has a plan of provision for you. He has a plan of provision for you tonight and I want to let you know that there are some people who God is actually positioning you to minister to tonight. You are under attack, but the attack is a distraction. You got to perceive the attack as a spiritual one and it's a fight between two great powers the powers of light and the powers of darkness and tonight god has given me this solemn obligation and responsibility and privilege to ask you to leave the the, the leave the the power of darkness that kingdom of darkness and transition into the kingdom of light and God is speaking specifically to you right now. And I know that you are listening to me. When I look at this entire narrative, friends, as we bring this message down, when I look, when I look at it from a bird's eye view, I just see a God who orchestrates in our lives, who does things that we can never understand with our finite minds. You see, God was orchestrating everything in a way for Paul and these prisoners. In a way that he can be able to teach them, even Paul, a lesson. That he is able to take care of your needs and even the needs of others around you. Look at verse 9 and 10 as we close. The Bible says, when Paul laid his hand on Publius' father and healed him. The Bible says in verse 9, so when this was done, <laughs> when this was done, others also. You see, when God is doing something with you, you are so caught up with what is happening with you. You're not really recognizing that God is actually using you as a magnet. <laughs> 
God is using you as a spiritual magnet to rope in others who need to experience his love, his grace, his mercy, to show them your testimony, to show them what God has been doing in your life. God is going to be using you as a spiritual magnet in 2022 to show your family that there is a better way to live. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ways thereof are the ways of death. And he is pulling you and he's saying let me tell you my child it seems like everyone is saying you are dead but i am still feeling a pulse in your heart there is a pulse in your life and god is ready he is available he is willing to do for you what you cannot even imagine or think you see the bible says when this was done others also who had diseases in the land came and were healed hallelujah somebody tonight who seems to feel like you are on a strange island a melita island and it seems like you are not even aware or sure what is about to come in your life there is a ship that was broken a broken experience it could have been from a family member or from some friend or whoever god decided to use but a ship that is broken is coming your way it's coming your way right now tonight and i can feel it in the atmosphere it is coming your way tonight and there is a special blessing that is coming in your way there is healing for you tonight there is restoration for you tonight there is uh, there's rejuvenation for you tonight there is reconciliation for a family tonight oh yes there is uh, there's a restoration that is about to happen in somebody's life tonight there's a revival that is about to happen tonight there is a reformation that is going to happen tonight and i'm saying to you tonight as verse 10 says the bible says who also honored us these same men this same barbarous people who seemed like they couldn't even speak the language of paul and the prisoners but they didn't need to speak the language because they knew how to speak the actions oh yes they knew how to speak the actions of love and compassion and grace and mercy and that is the god that we serve a god of compassion a god of grace a god of mercy and he is calling you tonight could those men as i close on that ship as they went through the beating as they went through the shaking as they went through that rough experience as they went through that covid 19 shake up on the sea could they have imagined that things would have turned out how they did i'm quite sure when they saw these barbarous people bringing them resources bringing them clothes bringing them food bringing them supplies for their onward journey but i shown i can see them huddled together but there was no COVID there, so there was no need to social distance. I could see them huddled together and they sang a song, Sister Seely. And the name of the song was, This was not what we expected. This was not what we expected. This was not what we expected can you hear the chorus tonight this was not what we expected i want to let you know tonight the loss and the damage that you have been experiencing or that you have experienced on your ship is actually a moment where god is clearing the space for new stock <laughs> God is clearing the inventory of your life 
for a new infilling of fresh stock spiritual stock a new life in Christ Jesus this is not what you expected tonight you see just like this snake this venomous viper that latched on to Paul's hand I want to let you know tonight there is another enemy who wants to latch on to you he's called the great deceiver the father of lies Satan himself he was in the garden he distracted Adam and Eve away from God's commands they fell into sin and that's what he wants to do to you tonight distract you from giving your life to Christ tonight but I rebuke the enemy tonight in the mighty name of Jesus just as that viper came out of the heat and latched on to Paul's hand the enemy thought that he had latched on to Christ when he gave his life for us and was buried in the grave they sealed the tomb and the guards stood there watching the tomb and the enemy thought that he had won the victory over the kingdom of God but something unexpected was to come the Bible shows us on the third day hallelujah Christ shook the silence of death and raised triumphantly from the grave and it is because of this tonight that we can shake off every snake and every defeating and distracting foe from the enemy into the fire tonight you can overcome that struggle that you are facing tonight through the power of the indwelling man of Calvary Jesus Christ God's favor is being demonstrated to you tonight and just like his son as he was willing to lay down his life for you just like on that cold night when Paul and the guys were shivering you may be cold in sins and trespasses right now expose to the elements of the enemy but God is inviting you tonight to find comfort in the fire of his love in the fire of his forgiveness in the fire of his grace in the fire of his mercy what would be your decision tonight God wants to take care of you he has a plan of provision for you what will be your decision tonight what will be your decision would you serve the one who loves you would you give him your life totally tonight i'm talking to you yes i know you're listening to me you have heard this message tonight I'm not going to be appealing long to you tonight I'm just asking you the simple question are you going to make that decision to serve Jesus Christ tonight regardless of the circumstance that you are in right now God is calling you my friend to accept Jesus tonight time is running out look in the chat you would see that link posted you would see that whatsapp number don't hesitate tonight text that number text it you have been texting for the entire day but this is a text that could change your life forever text that number I want to pray for you I want to lead you into that decision that could change your life God is calling you tonight and he's saying my child I am here accept me tonight in your life 
as your personal savior. What would be your decision tonight? Father Lord, thank you for your word. You have a plan that is way beyond our foresight. And tonight you are speaking specifically to a young man, a young woman, a parent tonight who knows that they need to surrender their life to you. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit will move and intervene in the lives of those tonight who need to make that decision to serve you. Lord, I pray that you will work on their hearts. May they click on that link. May they sign up that form and give their lives to you. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. We rebuke the enemy tonight and we thank you for victory in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let everybody say, Amen and Amen. What a solemn word. What a word. Shake it off, Jason. Shake, Shake it, it off. off. Shake it off. Shake no, it off. No, Andrea, Jesus. I mean, that was a powerful word. Mm -hmm. I sat and I listened to every word, every letter. Every single pulse point. Very meaningful. Mm -hmm. Very meaningful. And I believe that everyone who was listening, everyone who sat and looked at the preacher tonight, and read the scriptures that he would have given to us. I believe that their hearts and lives will transform. In Jesus. In Jesus' name. Yeah. You know, just a few things we want to remind you, everyone. If your ship is getting a beating, it's because God has a blessing on the way. Hallelujah. So don't just Hallelujah. look at the beating. Accept the fact that the blessing is coming. That beating is not at all what you expect. Yes. The pulse is beating faster yet during the series. The series is becoming increasingly exciting, more spiritually fulfilling, and a richer blessing with each message. If you've been blessed so far, type blessed in the chat. Type Amen. Blessed, blessed. Amen. Blessed. Amen. Come on, everybody. Amen. Type blessed. Amen. If you've been blessed, shout it out in Amen. Jesus' name. You know, God positions us where he can attend to our needs. Amen and the needs of others. And that has been the solemn point throughout this evening's program. Yes. You know, one of the things I've learned about God, Madam Andrea, He will do whatever it takes to save humanity. Oh, I'm so grateful whatever for it takes, God will do to save each and every one of us. Oh, yes. Not just us standing here, but everyone who is listening to us and watching us via the online platform. Yeah. You know, um, Jason, don't you think that message was rather loaded? It loaded was loaded. Serious pulse it was loaded. It was loaded. Very what are, loaded. What are some of the um, points that, that we got from tonight's sermon? I, I made a note of, of some of them. Yes. And, you know, um, one of my major points, um, again, is our positioning. Our positioning. What about our you positioning? You know, God places us. Wherever it is, so that we can indeed, whatever we are going through, yes. our situation can help others to come to his throne. Amen. That Some, is God. Sometimes when we're complaining, we don't know that we're already standing in our blessing. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And you know, Andrew, what other point have you picked up from tonight? Um, I took note of this fabulous pulse point. Your attack may be a distraction mm. or fight is not one of flesh and blood your attack may be a distraction wow and there's another one the devil is always threatened by the potential of your impact oh boy that is so a his heavy best point. form <laughs> of defense is attack i am so happy that the preacher was able to expose the enemy tonight and to remind Amen. our online viewers that you are in the greatest place once oh, yes. Jesus is with you. Amen. 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 All, you, all you need is Jesus, you know? So with his help, we can shake off that devil. Yes. Shake off all of his 
uh, efforts and we can make the impact that God created us to make in this world. Amen. What do you think Amen. so, Jason? Amen. You know, the devil doesn't like us, you know? What do you think about that? You think the devil likes us, He doesn't us, like us at all. He doesn't like us at all. He doesn't like us he at all. He hates us. Mm. So what should we do then? We should... Shake, shake, shake him off. And not shake only him that, off in but Jesus shake him name. off where he's coming from. Mm -hmm. Don't just shake him off and leave him around your environs. Shake but him shake totally him off away. where he's coming from. Shake him off back in the fire. Oh, yes. And shake him up back love, in the fire. I love that point. That I Pastor love that Kermit. point. Shake I him back into point. the fire. Mm -hmm. don't, don't play with him. Don't, don't play, play with him, him at because all. he's not playing with you. Excellent. Shake him into the fire. Good. So, ladies and gentlemen, we had an exceptionally great time again tonight. And I believe that our hearts were lifted and our souls were indeed inspired. Indeed. Andre, I learned a lot. And I'm yes, saying, so I am I. so solemn in my voice now because I've learned a lot. And I believe that what I have learned, the others will have learned it as well. I the preacher so. did a marvelous job. God's Amen. name was honored. Oh, yes. His Thank name you, was praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Andrea. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us just remind our audience what's happening tomorrow, and then we're just going to close off and bid them a wonderful evening. We invite you to join us tomorrow to have your spiritual pulse rejuvenated, to have yes. your pulse checked. It will begin at 3.05 uh, p.m. tomorrow. That's the USC chapel time. So till then, watch God provide. Watch God provide. And also, tomorrow you can encourage your persons to pull up the university page. We will be showing this um, episode tomorrow mm -hmm. from the university page. Yes. Wherever people will want to encourage you, take this opportunity to allow Jesus to bring light in your homes, to bring peace Amen. in your heart yes. and joy in your family. Mm -hmm. May God continue to bless you as even as you continue to connect to this series, Watch Your Pulse. God is doing mighty and great things and he will do that for you if you allow him. Only if you allow him. If you allow him. The invitation is clear. Yes. And so I am encouraging each and every one of you Open that heart's door and allow God to enter. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you because you are God. Thank you for your word this evening. Your word still has that power. Thank you for transformed lives. Thank you for persons who are even thinking about turning, turning their backs to this world and turning their eyes to you. Mighty is indeed our God and mighty will remain our God. Thank you, mighty God, for everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a good Amen. night, everybody. Until good night, we everybody. Meet again tomorrow at 3.05 p.m. for your spiritual health check. Join us tomorrow. We look forward to seeing yes. you. Yes. Bless the Lord, everyone. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Let's shake that devil off. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Amen. Listen to me. Can you hear it? Listen to the beat. Can you feel it? Listen to the beat. It's the Holy Spirit. Listen to the beat. Listen to the beat. Can you hear it? Listen to the beat. Can you feel it? Listen to the beat. It's the Holy Spirit. Now that I am walking with the Lord, He reveals Himself to me. Share it again, share it again. Yeah, yeah.